Hi, so you clicked on this video because you want to learn something related to dentistry. Well, you are on the right place. I am Dr. Hina, the voice and soul behind Dr. Teeth. And this is the platform where we make learning interesting and incredibly easy for you. So do leave a like and subscribe to my channel and I will recommend you to join channel membership to watch our premium videos. You can also visit our website for online classes, courses, and MCQs. So let's get started. Hello everyone, Assalamu Alaikum. I hope that you all are happy and safe wherever you are. Let us begin today's topic. Okay, and that is the factors determining the post selection. Now there are various factors which influence the post selection and they can be broadly classified into three. We have the biological, mechanical and aesthetics. In the biological, we have the root length, tooth anatomy, root width, canal configuration and amount of coronal tooth structure. In mechanical, we have the torquing force, stresses, development of hydrostatic pressure, post design, post material, material compatibility, bonding capability, core retention, retrievability, and in aesthetics, obviously, the aesthetic and the crown material will be discussed. Now, the first one is the root length. Okay, whenever we have a tooth that has, you know, long root or sufficient root, we can have a post that is long. Why? Because greater the post length, the better will be the retention and the stress distribution. Okay, but we have to keep in mind that at least 3 to 4 mm apical gutta percha has to be there. Means, you know, when we do the post and core preparation, we prepare the canal, right? So, we have to prepare the canal keeping in mind that we have, we have to leave 3 to 4 mm gutta percha on the apical portion of the tooth. Why? Because we have created a hermetic seal during the endodontic treatment and we do not want to break that, right? So, keep 3 to 4 mm of gutta bacha, okay? Now, there are cases when the root will be shorter. What to do then? So, we can use a parallel sided threaded post. These have a parallel side and they will have threads, okay? And we can use reinforced composite luting agent to compensate for the reduced post length. Now here we can see we have a molar and it has a short root. Now in such cases we can place two post. Okay. So this will provide us additional retention. Coming to tooth anatomy. Now we all know that each tooth has a unique anatomy. Even the same tooth in two individuals might have different anatomies, right? So knowing the correct anatomy, investigating each case for its anatomy is very important, okay? In case we are doing improper preparation of the canal, okay? In case use a large diameter post, we can have perforations. We can have a pical perforation, we can have lateral perforation, okay? Also, if you're using an active post, it can lead to little cracks in the dentinal wall. Therefore, we should have a thorough knowledge of the tooth anatomy and we have to do radiographic evaluation. Okay, so grids, the use of grids really help in determining the correct length, diameter and design of the post. Okay. Now, Gutman stated that the roots of the maxillary centrals and the laterals as we can see here and also the premolars they have sufficient bulk to accommodate most post system so he said that these tooth have such an anatomy that they can accommodate most post system but also keep here in mind that you know in the incisors okay we don't prefer post unless it is very very essential okay because of the inclination of the incisor right you can see you can imagine your upper incisor or lower incisor they are inclined right so because of the inclination, having a post can be detrimental to the tooth. So unless it is very important, you know, we should avoid post in the anteriors. Coming to post width, how wide the post should be. Now it has been found that when you increase the post width, it has no significant effect on its retention. So now we know that increasing the post width will have no significant effect on its retention. Also, the tooth restored with large diameter post is reported to provide the least resistance to fracture with a decrease in the width of the remaining dentine. So, we also know that if we restore a tooth using a large 
diameter post it will provide the least resistance to fracture so what what is the criteria in selection of the post width we have to preserve the tooth structure right reducing the chance of perforation obviously and permitting the restored tooth to resist fractures so different approaches were given regarding the selection of post diameter okay conservationist approach preservationist approach and proportionist approach so there were 13 proponents for the conservationist approach so let's not go into these details so basically we have three approaches which tells us what should be the diameter of the post okay so let us see them okay so this is the proportionist approach here they say that the post width should not be greater than one third of the root width at its narrowest dimension so here we can see in this image let us suppose this is the narrowest dimension of the root okay so they said that the post width should not be greater than one third of the root width at its narrowest dimension so that is the proportionist approach in the preservationist approach they said that the post should be surrounded by a minimum of 1 mm of sound dentine. Here we can see the post is surrounded by a minimum of 1 mm sound dentine. Then we have the conservationist approach. Basically it talks about the conservation of tooth structure as much as possible. Okay, So some investigators advocated minimal canal preparation and maintaining as much residual dentine as possible thereby suggesting restriction of the post diameter in an effort to conserve the remaining tooth structure now coming to canal configuration and post adaptability okay now canal configuration it aids in making a choice between a custom designed post and a prefabricated post now there are situations when we have funnel shaped canals you can see this is a funnel so when the canals are funnel shaped we have you know we can face various dilemmas what are those dilemmas the first one is whether we should place a parallel sided post and fill the remaining space with cement okay the second is to use a tapered post that will closely fit into the canal wall or to use a large prefabricated parallel sided post by removing additional tooth structure so that we get an intimate contact between the root and the post okay so it has been said that if our canal requires very extensive preparation means we have to remove a lot of tooth structure in that cases a well shaped cast post and core restoration will be more attentive than a prefabricated post and also when we have wide canals we can reinforce our root with composite coming to the coronal structure here in this image we can see this portion which is a pikel to the core that is called as the ferrule so at least 1.5 mm ferrule should be all around the tooth okay now non-metal post such as the carbon fiber post they are used when we have ample tooth structure okay ample coronal dentine is present okay and if we do not have enough tooth structure you know when there is severe tooth loss or moderate tooth loss we can use a cast post and core coming to stress 